Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is ELE424 Analog Electronics 1. We are now ready for the uh, second video under semiconductor materials, which is PN Junction. I am Wan Fazli Dahanim Abdullah. I'm from Faculty of Electrical Engineering, UITM. So where we are in a larger uh, view of things, uh, in, the in the syllabus, uh, we have semiconductor materials, diodes, BJT and MOSFET, and um, clo um, ending with the general concepts of amplifiers. So under semiconductor materials, we, are, we have covered intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors, and um, we have done uh, n-type, p-type, energy band model, bonding model, uh, donors and acceptors, and we ended with uh, diffusion and drift current, uh, which is caused by um, the carriers that are generated, which are the electrons and holes. So today we are here looking at PN junction. This is the reading list. You may want to have a look at this uh, later. Okay, topics covered for this uh, video is first we're going to have a look at the introduction and then we'll have a look at physical structure of PN junction in equilibrium. Okay, um, first we will look at what happens when the PN junction is there without any bias and then we're going to look at the effects of bias we're going to compare it with no bias to reverse bias and forward bias and we'll have a look at the diode uh, IV characteristics and the reverse breakdown and some practical issues before we enter um, diode applications in the next video so introduction n-type and p-type previous lecture we have learned the important semiconductor concepts we are now ready to consider our first practical semiconductor structure which is the p-n junction we know that the material can be p-type or n-type and in, and now we're going to look at uh, what happens when you have in the same material part of the uh, structure is p-type and part of the structure is n-type so the p-n junction is the boundary where p-type and n-type is next to each other it is uh, it is the same material it's not different materials but it is next to each other in the same piece of material and it is separated by a depletion region we will now learn what happens and how we can control current at the p-n junction this depletion region is powerful enough to allow current flow in a single direction. So PN junction uh, forms semiconductor devices that can form circuits with functions. Okay, So uh, if I have one, just one PN junction, um, I can form a diode. But if I have um, uh, two PN junctions in a structure of NPN or PNP, I can form a bipolar junction transistor. And if I have two um, uh, diffusion regions of heavily doped N plus in a um, substrate of P type, I can form a MOSFET. And these are all because of the um, PN junction actions. So let's have a look at uh, the physical structure of the PN junction in equilibrium. So this is the PN junction. If there is this P type and n type and they are next to each other now this cube here are not two separate materials it is the same material we can dope half of it with an acceptor and dope another half of it with uh, a donor now at this boundary here it will form a depletion region so one part of semiconductor material can be doped as p type and the other end as n type at the boundary there is a natural positive to negative charge reaction due to carrier and atoms that causes a depletion region to be formed so okay so uh, in what we're going to have is in p type so there is p type here next to n type so this is p type and there is n type and you can see this actually from the p type you have more holes than electrons and at the n side you have more electrons than holes so in p type a uh, majority carrier holes are positively charged okay uh, as we have just pointed out and accept the atoms the atoms that are group three but have to accept another electron are now uh, negative ions and they are fixed they're not carriers okay so you and it is denoted in this diagram yeah by uh, the accepted ions are uh, shown by a negatively a negative charge uh, surrounded by a circle meaning that it's bound it's not free to move it is not carriers it is not electrons it is just a negative ion so on the end side okay the majority carriers are electrons and um, the donor atoms 
which are from group 5 which have lost one electron are now short of electrons so now they are positively charged so this positive sign here bound by the circle is not a hole it is a donor atom that are positively charged okay so this depletion region causes no current flow between the p type and n type okay it doesn't allow the uh, holes from the p side to want to go to the enzyme because if you because we know the concept of diffusion where the concept of diffusion says that if there is a concentration gradient um, this uh, charges you would want to flow to the other side but this depletion region opposes it okay so it does not allow any current flow between the p type and n type unless you do something you apply a certain voltage across the depletion region so to control the current flow at the depletion region we need to apply bias but first before we uh, uh, go into um, the concept of applying bias let's have a look at how the depletion region is formed okay why is it that there is a depletion region and if you look at the I'm sorry I have to uh, change the slide back now if you look at this slide um, uh, at the depletion region, only negatively charged acceptor atoms and positively charged donor uh, uh, atoms are next to each other, but there are no carriers. In this area, you do not see any holes or electrons. Okay, how the depletion region is formed. A large density gradient in both hole and electron concentrations occur across this junction, meaning what this first what this first point here is saying is that at the end at the p type you have a lot of um, uh, holes more holes as a majority carrier compared to the uh, n type so that means that there is a difference in a hole concentration gradient but for the n side okay this side you have more electrons than um, electron concentration compared to holes because here you have the majority um, carrier and at the uh, p type electrons are minority carriers so that this concentration region would want to cause diffusion to happen initially there is a diffusion of holes from the p region into the n region and a diffusion of electrons from the n region into the p region so the flow of holes from the p region uncovers negatively charged acceptor ions and the flow of electrons from the n region uncovers positively charged donor ions so this action creates a charge separation which sets up an electric field oriented in the direction from the positive charge to the negative charge so these electrons that travels from that travels from um, n to P uh, recombines with holes that travels from P to N and they leave positively uh, charged donor ions and positively uh, negatively charged uh, acceptor ions okay so when there is a collection of positive charge and negative charge that means there is an electric field that is being uh, formed so the result is the formation of a depletion region around the junction and this direction of electric field is from the positive charge uh, donor ions here to negatively charged acceptor ions at the p type at the p side so within the depletion region there is an internal electric field that opposes majority current flow meaning if you look at holes if you look at the holes it would want to diffuse from p to n but if you look at the electric field it would want to move in the direction of electric field so it's opposing each other as a resultant there is no current flow across the depletion region okay. now let's have a look at the pn junction semiconductor diode now just just with a single pn junction you already have uh, device called the semiconductor diode so the diode is a two terminal device it is formed by a pn junction a diode ideally conducts in only one direction it will not allow current to flow in the other direction so it allows current to flow from positive terminal to negative terminal so what this diagram is showing is that um, this is the symbol for the diode okay so when you draw it on paper 
um, this side of the triangle here is the positive terminal and the side of uh, the line here is the negative terminal. The voltage drop across it is Vd and the current that goes through it is Id. So and in an ideal diode, if it allows current to flow, when it allows current to flow, it acts like a short circuit, just like a switch. Okay, And here it, it, it is written ID is limited by circuit, meaning that uh, you have to do some kind of circuit analysis to know the actual um, amount of current flowing. Now, if it does not allow any current to flow because it is being biased in the opposite direction, okay, like this one here, um, it will act like an open circuit and the current across it is zero. So to control the current flow through a diode, bias voltage is applied. The type of bias determines the diode operating conditions. So if you want to allow current to flow, you need to apply forward bias. If you do not want current to flow, you either apply no bias at all or if you want it to, um, um, to make sure that uh, there is no current flow or uh, for appli some application circuit you might want to apply the re reverse bias on purpose and now in, in this two you do not allow the current to flow okay so uh, the, the point here is that if you want current to flow uh, across a diode it has to be forward biased now let's look at the PN junction if we apply bias so these are uh, three different uh, illustration of the PN junction under different kind of bias. The first is uh, when it's an open circuit. So this one here, what we have here is an equilibrium, meaning uh, the applied bias here is, is just an open circuit. There are no bias applied. Okay. Uh, here we have a reverse bias applied. Reverse bias means that we are applying um, the more negative potential uh, to the P um, side and the positive uh, potential or the higher potential to the end side and if it is uh, this is reverse bias and if it is forward bias the higher potential of the bias is applied to the p side and the lower potential is applied to the end side okay so if there is no bias um, the um, built-in voltage across here the opposing electric field is the um, value in equilibrium but if it is reverse biased um, the width of this depletion region becomes wider and the opposing voltage becomes um, larger and if it is forward biased the width becomes um, smaller and the opposing voltage is also smaller and we'll see what happens with that so the semiconductor diode with no bias when there is no external voltage applied meaning if you say no bias um, uh, in terms of um, quantity what you're saying is that the voltage drop applied across the diode is at zero volts okay when there is no voltage applied uh, no current is flowing uh, the um, depletion region width is what it was when it is in equilibrium okay only a modest depletion region exists and it opposes current flow so if there is reverse bias, external voltage is applied across the PN junction. A defini definition of reverse bias is that the lower potential is applied to the P side and the higher potential is applied to the N side. So for example, if you have, if you have a voltage across here of uh, 3 volts um, and that 3 volts 0 is connected to P, uh, positive 3 is connected to N. Now this will cause this um, uh, PN junction to be in reverse biased and the reverse voltage causes the depletion region to widen so it's also shown here it's, it appears to have um, uh, grown wider the electrons in the n-type material are attracted to the positive terminal um, of the voltage source okay and the holes of the p-type material are attracted towards the negative terminal of the um, voltage source. So what you have here um, effectively is a depletion region that has become wider. Now, before I leave this um, slide, I, uh, I would like to also illustrate um, this uh, p-n junction under reverse bias. It can also happen this way. So let's say I have a p-n junction and this is the depletion region. This is the p-type and n-side. Um, let's say this is connected to a circuit, a different circuit, okay? And the voltage 
at the point of this circuit is 7 volts and the voltage at output at this volt point is 3 volts let's say for example now if this happens this will also cause the PN junction to be in uh, reverse bias because the side with the higher potential is biasing N side and the um, point with the lower potential is biasing P uh, type so this 3 volts is lower than 7 volts meaning that the voltage across here is 4 volts for example so this would also cause the uh, PN junction to be in reverse bias and when it's in reverse bias um, uh, typically there will be no current flow and the um, uh, diode will be acting like an um, open switch so with forward bias external voltage is applied across the PN junction in such that the higher potential is applied to the P side and the lower potential is applied to the N side now if you look at the, this um, um, uh, battery here uh, the voltage source here you have the positive connected to the P side and the lower potential connected to the N side so this will make the diode forward bias the forward voltage causes the depletion region to narrow okay narrower than what it was in equ equilibrium and the electrons and holes are pushed towards the PN junction the electrons and holes have sufficient energy to cross the PN junction hence allow current flow Okay, we will now go on to PN junction diode uh, IV characteristics. Okay, this is an uh, diode IV characteristics. Now, when you um, learn um, uh, BJT and MOSFET as well, you will be looking at a lot of current voltage characteristics because these kind of plots tell you when um, the device turns on. Okay, so note the regions for no bias. So from here. If you look at the x-axis, at this point there is no bias applied. When it is less than zero, okay, it means that it is reverse biased, and when it is greater than zero, it means that it is forward bias. Okay. So the bias applied across the diode, if you look at this diagram, has to be large enough uh, to make it forward biased, i.e., to overcome the threshold voltage. So when there is no bias, there is no current. Now, when it is reverse biased, there is also no current, effectively no current. Okay, there is actually uh, uh, saturation current. But even if you apply greater than zero volts, okay, if you're not talking about uh, a conceptual ideal diode which turns on at zero volts, okay, even if you apply more than zero volts, it is not large enough to make it forward bias until you apply something greater than the threshold voltage. Okay then only it turns on how do you know that it turns on from this diagram because the value of current is now getting bigger and bigger all right so the point at which the diode changes from no bias condition to forward bias condition occurs when the electrons and holes are given sufficient energy from the applied bias to cross the pn junction so at this point at this point of forward bias okay uh, the value of voltage is um uh, strong enough to overcome the built-in um, opposing electric field in the depletion region and now uh, carriers can flow across the PN junction. So typical threshold voltage for silicon diode is 0 0.7 volts, typical, but you can also have other values because you can actually design this based on the carrier concentration that you want for the uh, device. And germanium diode is typically 0 0.3 volts in the textbooks. Okay. So diode as a switch. All right, this diode as a switch. If you look at this diagram, diode can be used like a switch. If you look at the blue line, if you look at the blue line here, this is the ideal characteristics. Ideal means it doesn't behave like that in the real uh, world. Okay, but conceptually, yes, you have anything less than. Um, zero which makes it a reverse bias there'll be no current once you hit slightly just above zero it goes up okay but in actual characteristics this is what happens okay under reverse bias there'll be a reverse saturation current okay and after you apply some forward bias you need to give some time uh, for it to uh, exceed threshold voltage before it can actually allow uh, current to flow also if you compare the blue line to the blue plot to the black one okay um, 
there is um there is a slope to the black gradient it's not just like a vertical line um, compared to the ideal characteristics okay. and again when it is open uh, when the switch is closed okay uh, when it is turned on it acts like a short circuit and when it is turned off it acts like an open circuit so similarly between mechanical and diode switch it only allows current to flow when it is on the difference between mechanical and diode switch is that diode allows current flow only in one direction, not the other direction. An equivalent circuit can be constructed to take into account some important diode characteristics. Okay, um, we can draw the diode, the the diode symbol. Okay, okay, to be in the form of. Um, um, equivalent circuit so that we see uh, what the behaviors are okay now in this graph here the, the sorry the plot before we are comparing ideal to actual characteristics here we have another plot one showing the behavior of germanium okay and the other uh, plot is behavior of silicon So the typical forward bias voltage required for gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide is not in this diagram but you can imagine uh, gallium arsenide requires 1.2 volts threshold voltage meaning that it will go right up here, it's not in the diagram. Okay, Silicon diode is 0 0.7 volts, germanium diode is 0 0.3 volts. We will now compare an ideal diode with a practical diode. So when we draw an equivalent circuit of a, di of a diode, it would at least have the symbol. So when we draw a symbol of a diode, it is actually an ideal diode. So an ideal diode assumes switching happens right after zero volts. <coughs> yeah, it happens here. So when we draw this, if the symbol looks like this, it's just an ideal diode. Now, a slightly less ideal diode takes into account the threshold voltage, the forward bias required to overcome the depletion region. So, if I were to look at this diagram, uh, hold on, maybe I should um, have a larger pointer option. Yeah, that's better. So, a slightly less ideal diode takes into account the threshold voltage, uh, the forward bias required to overcome the depletion region. So, here, it's this area here. In the equivalent circuit, a voltage source is added to represent this behavior. So, here, I have the symbol of the ideal diode. And this side here is an additional value of a voltage source equivalent to the threshold voltage and take note of the direction of the positive and negative terminals so here I have an ideal diode with the positive terminal this side the anode here and the cathode here but for my voltage uh, source the uh, negative terminal is connected to the anode and uh, the positive terminal is connected to the circuit outside and um, if I were to let's see, I'll have to change it to a pen hold on If I were to apply, let's say, for example, 0 0.6 volts here, okay, that would indicate for this diagram, for this to be 0 0.6, I have 0 0.7 volts across the power supply, and that means I have, I am applying a negative 1 volts here, effectively making this a reverse bias um, condition, which means that this diode will not be allowing the current to flow and this diode will turn off and this whole thing will just be like an open circuit okay that is an example and so if I apply um, let's say 0 0.9 volts okay that would mean I am applying 2 volts across um, the diode the ideal diode which sorry 0 0.2 volts it's always difficult to find my pen. Okay, so 0 0.2 volts um, plus 0 0.7 volts makes 0 0.9 volts. So this one is a short circuit of um, of that value. Okay, of 0 0.9 volts. And if I apply 0 0.9 volts, this would still be 0 0.7 volts. But we'll have a, we'll have a look at this later. Okay. So this will not be 0.7 volts. There'll be somewhere else in the circuit that would absorb this uh, value. 
Okay, ideal versus practical diode. Um, a slightly more practical diode takes into account not only the threshold voltage but the slope when it is on. It is now no longer vertical. There is actually a slope. If it is vertical, it would look like this. Right? Well, that's a very bright straight line, but you know what I mean. So it has a slope there. A slope in an IV curve indicates resistive behavior. Why, why, why is it saying uh, that it is a, there is a resistive behavior here? It's because when I have a slope of I versus V, okay, if it is a resistor, it will look like this. And the inverse of this slope, is equals to 1 over the resistance R. So anytime you see a current versus voltage slope, uh, a current versus voltage uh, plot and it has a slope to it, it means that there is some kind of resistive behavior. Whether uh, it is a resistor or not, it could mean that if it is not a resistor, it could mean that there are some parasitic resistance in the device itself. Parasitic means it's there inside there even though you don't, it's not supposed to be a resistor but that resistive behavior is part of the device. So in the equivalent circuit, a resistor is added to represent this behavior. So in this case, if you're taking into account of a practical diode with the threshold voltage and the slope, you'd have to include the voltage, the slope, and the ideal diode. And this whole blue box, they've put all of these uh, components in one blue box to say that this is the diode that we're talking about. Okay, Not just the ideal diode, not just the voltage source, not just the resistor, but this whole thing is a diode. So there are three types of resistance, um, which is the DC, AC, and average AC resistance. So before I leave this slide, um, there are three types. There, there's three types of resistance. Uh, DC, AC um, is that these are typically demonstrated in all other semiconductor devices that you will encounter later on in this course, which is the BJT and MOSFET as well. Okay. So this 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 plot here, this. Again, let me change this to a highlighter. Okay, no, not a highlighter. Sorry, laser pointer. So this plot here, okay, you can actually represent this with an equation. And this is what you call the Shockley's equation. Diode characteristics can be represented by the Shockley's equation for forward and reverse bias regions. So this is the formula of the ID um, uh, current uh, plot uh, versus voltage VD. So, so this is ID for the y-axis and VD for the x-axis. And ID is equals to IS, which is the reverse saturation current, uh, times e to the power of VD, which is applied by its voltage, divided by NVT. And V is thermal voltage, not threshold voltage, but thermal voltage, minus 1. Okay. And VT is KT over Q. Okay, K is Boltzmann's constant, TK is absolute temperature, and Q is the um, magnitude of electronic charge. So at 27 degrees um, uh, Celsius, VT is 26 mV, and usually we just take a um, uh, rough estimate, we just use 26 mV for most of our calculations. So semiconductor devices are easily affected by temperature. Having said that, it is easily affected for tem by temperature, but for the purpose of simplicity, some values are assumed to be the same unless it is stated that effects of temperature are considered. So read the question, or read the context. So diode resistance, this is going to be a bit quick uh, because we'll see this later. Uh, Diode resistance for a specific applied DC voltage, VD, the diode has a specific current ID and a specific resistance ID. So DC resistance is just at a point. So RD is equals to VD over ID. Okay. So example, if I have this plot and I'm applying um, the diode voltage across it is 0 0.8 and the current uh, through it is uh, 20 milliamp, then this value here will be RD, uh, VD over ID. If it is an AC resistance, in the forward bias region, the resistance depends on the amount of current ID in the diode. And this is a general formula that we can use, uh, RD is equal to 26 millivolts over ID plus RB. And these values, the voltage across the diode is fairly constant. RB ranges from a typical 0.1 ohm for high power devices to 2 ohm for low power general purpose devices. In some cases, RB are often ignored. In the reverse bias region, the resistance is effectively infinite because the diode acts like an open circuit. 
For average AC resistance, the AC resistance can be calculated using the current and voltage values for two points with a diode characteristics curve. So you, you can actually do um, find the resistance here. Okay. Now let's have a look at PN junction reverse breakdown. So we've done with the ideal diode characteristics, IV characteristics. Now let's have a look at reverse breakdown. Okay. Breakdown. What does breakdown mean? When reverse bias voltage is large enough, it can cause the diode um, to break down and the reverse current to increase dramatically. So this is what happens. If you apply forward the, the threshold voltage, but if you apply reverse bias up to a certain point, it can also break down and cause current to flow. So anytime you see that the current is not zero, it means that it is allowing current to flow. So in this case, even though it is reverse biased, it is allowing current to flow at a certain value. So when a reverse bias voltage is applied to a PN junction, the electric field in the depletion region increases. Generally, the electric field may become large enough that covalent bonds are broken. The covalent bonds itself are broken and electron hole pairs are created. So the electrons are swept into the N region and holes are swept into the P region by the electric field generating a large reverse bias current. So this is because of the covalent bond uh, being broken. So the reverse bias current created by breakdown mechan mechanism is limited only by external circuit. What does this mean? It means that the, um, um, uh, the value of the current uh, depends on the circuit it is connected to. So if the current is not sufficiently limited, a large power can be dissipated in the junction that may damage the device and cause burn out. So it operating in reverse bias is not a burn out yet it's not damaged yet sometimes it is intended it is purposely designed to be so okay but if you do not have a limiting circuit then you will uh, damage the device so two mechanisms of breakdown can happen one is avalanche breakdown which is large really large negative voltage or zener breakdown which are intentionally designed to happen at lower levels so you you design the diode such that it is it, it will um, break down at a specific voltage that you want it to break down okay so we'll have a look at this too okay so semiconductor diode breakdown region avalanche breakdown occurs at large negative voltage way 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 outside to the negative point here but when minority carriers crossing the depletion region gain sufficient kinetic energy from the high electric field the carriers are able to break covalent bonding covalent bonds by colliding but zener breakdown are intentionally designed to break down at lower levels this one here maybe about five volts less than five volts so zener breakdown is a result of tunneling of carriers across the junction zener breakdown is not avalanche breakdown Avalanche breakdown is like all hell break loose. The covalent bonds are all broken. But Zener breakdown is a result of tunneling of carriers across the junction. Uh, and this effect is prominent at very high doping concentrations and results in breakdown voltages less than 5 volts. So the maximum reverse voltage that uh, happens before breakdown is called the peak inverse voltage or peak reverse voltage. We'll have a look at this again. Um, when we do diode applications. So some practical issues just very quickly. How does it look like? Okay. Um, you might w be wondering is this diode a real thing? Yes, it's a real thing. People do use it. Uh, when you buy it, you will find uh, things that is called as a, a data sheet. Okay. The diode specification. They'll give you graphs that will explain to you what the values are, typical values are like and how do the r real diodes look like. It could look like this. Okay, these are typical values, individual package diodes or diodes in integrated circuits which are too small to be seen because they are in hundreds and thousands of other transistors in a small chip, small integrated circuit. Now they are um, uh, incorporated into that and they are designed in layouts um, and the layouts are designed in layers. So if you do a cross-section electron microscopy, uh, you can take pictures of it. So practical issues, now you have a diode, you're, let's say you're building the circuit in the lab, how do you check the diode functionality? Well, there is a diode checker, you can find it with an ohmmeter, you can actually check red lead, uh, using the LEDs of the um, um, multimeter, you can find out. 
and you could have you could check it with a curve tracer or you can use a semiconductor parametric analyzer these are all scopes that looks like this and you can actually plot this diode IV characteristics so let's say you want to check whether the diode is behaving like what it should or not then you get um, a semiconductor parametric analyzer for example to see whether the IV characteristics is like this whether it will turn on at the threshold voltage that you intend it to be that's it so thank you uh, we will see you uh, in the next value pack which is uh, diode applications thank you